if I had a 800 nanogram per deciliter uh, total test level, I would want to see at least a What's up guys, Derek, more place, more dates .com. Today we're gonna to be talking about the ideal testosterone to estrogen ratio. So after I put out my estrogen videos on, you know, why inhibiting aromatase is neurotoxic and the examples showing this and that, like all the benefits of estrogen and why it is such an important regulator of, you know, cardiovascular health, neurological health, um, libido, fucking dick function, literally, literally very, very important things. A lot of people ask me, well, how do you know what the optimal ratio is of testosterone to estrogen in your blood work? So I had to extrapolate a bit to actually come to some sort of like actual way to interpret this because it's not like the units of measurement in blood tests are even the same units. Like when you have, when you measure total testosterone, it's usually in nanograms per deciliter. When you get your estradiol, it's usually in picograms per milliliter and testosterone that's your total testosterone, whereas estradiol is only your E2. It's not even total estrogen. So we're just talking about a component, a fraction of the total estrogens in your entire body. So there's a bit of like finagling I had to do to figure out what is like a reasonable, you know, ratio to expect based on averages and based on the clinical data. And I sort of, you know, came to a good uh, framework to go by. So typically just in general, the ratio is 100 to one, but let me explain before you, you know, just go check your blood work and see if it's times 100 of your estradiol because it's not exactly how it works. So approximately 40 to 50 micrograms of estradiol is produced per day in men. So micrograms, that's like the actual concentration of the hormone produced. So like, you know how men produce three to 10 milligrams per day of testosterone. That's not, you know, in nanograms, that's an actual milligram equivalent. So you produce approximately 40 to 50 micrograms of estradiol of E2 per day. Um, so that's about 280 to 350 micrograms per week. So about five to 10 micrograms of the estradiol daily produced is in the testes, approximately 10 to 20% of it. And the remaining 40 to 45 micrograms, 80 to 90% of it, in peripheral tissues like adipose tissue, muscle, breast, brain, liver, and bone in which the aromatase, aromatase enzyme is expressed. So, and this is also why inhibiting aromatase can be so deleterious because in tissue specific hormones that need more estrogen, if you're just indiscriminately inhibiting aromatase in these tissues, it doesn't really matter what's in your blood if the actual tissues themselves are deprived just because your blood might say you're in range, it doesn't necessarily mean your brain is getting enough estrogen, your bones, your whatever. So you produce on average, the at like low to high end, this is very, you know, individual specific, but three to 10 milligrams of testosterone per day. So five milligrams is kind of like the average. So then five milligrams is a hundred times the 50 micrograms of estradiol produced per day which is, so roughly 40 to 50 milligrams per week is how much actual test the average man produces, which is exactly 100 times the 40 to 50 micrograms of estradiol that they produce. So as far as like why, you know, estrogen is important and stuff, I actually recommend you go check out my videos on uh, um, testosterone is not neuroprotective, estrogen is, and all those videos and whatnot. So as far as the estradiol to testosterone ratio, at supraphysiological doses, the E2, the estradiol to testosterone ratio, start to decrease. And the 100 to 1 ratio does not stay static throughout a blast phase for most individuals, as seen here in the graph of graded dose response to supraphysiological dosages of testosterone up to 600 milligrams per week. So you see the ratio is slowly declining, implying that aromatase does not function in a dose dependent manner where it just, you know, spits out an exactly proportional estradiol to testosterone ratio or spits out equivalent estradiol for the amount of testosterone administered for all dosage groups. And the ratio becomes more and more skewed the higher the dose of testosterone. But just in general, we're talking about in like a therapeutic context first and in an ideal world, your ratio would stay the same, like the physiologic homeostasis that your body wants to stay at, you would ideally be at that regardless of your dose. Obviously there's limiting factors on aromatase expression and whatnot, but anyways, therapeutic levels, like where a healthy man would be at 101, 
And this is how you would interpret your blood work. And this is the, like the extrapolation part. So the average male is going to have about 30 picogram per milliliter estradiol uh, blood test result in their serum. The average testosterone level is around 600 nanograms per deciliter, depending on which study you look at, because you know some will show a 531 nanogram per deciliter median. Other sample sizes will show as high as a 679 per nanogram per deciliter median. But in general, it's about 600 nanograms per deciliter total testosterone. So in general, the ratio of estradiol in the actual units of measurement that we use in our blood work, picograms per milliliter, relative to the units of measurement we use for our testosterone levels and nanograms per deciliter, results in about 5% of the estradiol in picograms per milliliter relative to total testosterone in nanograms per deciliter. I'm not even going to get into free estrogen relative to free testosterone because that's like a, a whole nother level of extrapolation. But anyways... Um, so that's a rough guideline. So in general, if a man produces 600 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone, he will, if he's healthy and not indiscriminately inhibiting aromatase and doing things that are going to, you know, inhibit physiologic processes, he will probably have about 30 picograms per milliliter of estradiol in his serum, which is 5%. So, you know, you can do the math on that for other things. And frankly, this is more of like a very, very rough framework based on averages that I just pulled out of like sample size data. So it's like, you know, don't take this as some concrete rule where it's like, oh, like a healthy free testosterone, two to 3% of your total. That's not what, that's not, this isn't as concrete as that. But in general, from what I can see, it's about like the 100 to one ratio applies for the actual milligram amount that you produce relative to the microgram amount that your body like pumps out. But as far as like actual serum concentrations reflected in a unit of measurement in your blood on a lab test, that's what you're seeing. And the 100 to 1 doesn't apply for that because you're seeing estrogen, estradiol in picograms per milliliter. You're seeing total tests in nanograms per deciliter. So for that, the picogram per milliliter estradiol is about 5% of the nanogram per deciliter total T from what I can tell. But anyway, so that's a general framework. A lot of people ask me that and that is sort of what I would look for in a blood test. So like, for example, if I had a 800 nanogram per deciliter uh, total test level, I would want to see at least a 40 picogram per milliliter estradiol in the blood. Now, obviously you can say it's just a number and like, who cares? Like, what about the tissues? We wanna know tissue specific levels. It's like, okay, hey, bro, like, we don't have biopsies of your fucking bones, your head, your fucking heart, your everything, your brain. So we have serum, that's what we can go off of right now. So just in general, for the people getting blood work, that's all we're talking about. We're not talking about like next level shit, intracrine hormone and whatnot. There's all these like new, you know, arguments and, you know, TRT and whatnot that I'm, I'm totally on board with and totally makes sense, by the way. Like, obviously it matters how much aromatase expression is occurring in the tissues that actually need the estrogen rather than just circulating in the blood that makes sense but still the blood is a proxy for reflecting health status which we have come to know pretty well reflects certain symptoms at certain levels regardless if it's a arbitrary number in blood work it still reflects as a proxy of symptoms for most people so you know like in general you see your number like disproportionately high relative to another hormone you're probably going to experience laundry list of side effects. If you have a disproportionate ratio the other way, you're gonna have this other laundry list of side effects in general. But so that's kind of like our general guideline of hormones right now. And that is like, without spending a ton of money to get next level testing done, this is sort of my framework I'm proposing. And you know, you don't need, you don't need to use it. I'm just, I'm just, this is what I'm looking at. And uh, I thought it was an interesting topic to bring to light because a lot of people ask me, how do I check, you know, my what's a good estrogen level relative to my total test. So this is what I would sort of use as a general ballpark. So take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe. Check out my blog, moreplates.com. Follow me on Instagram, at moreplates, under more dates, Facebook, Snapchat, BitChute, Twitter, TikTok. I don't know how many people actually hear that when I say it or if it just goes in one ear, out the other. But like, actually, like I post other stuff on like Instagram sometimes. So like you should check that out and actually follow me. Facebook is like so inactive that organic reach on Facebook sucks. So actually like if you could follow me there too, that'd be cool. Twitter, I just kind of tweet the same stuff I put out here, but you know, it'd be cool if you follow on Twitter too. Um, TikTok, BitChute, 
whatever. I don't really care about those. Apple Podcasts, if you want to drop a rating there, helps the algorithm there. Um, dropping a like here and comment helps your algorithm here. So that is appreciated. And if you want to support the channel, check out uh, my TRT clinic, link in the description below. If you are somebody seeking hormone optimization or interested in TRT, or just want to see if you have any hormone imbalances or deficiencies that would, um, you know, you'd benefit from optimizing. I highly recommend you check them out. It's free to talk to them and just, you know, discuss your situation at least. And then from there you can get blood work done and get a more thorough examination from the doctor and whatnot, and then um, address any kind of imbalances or deficiencies you have. If you end up going all the way through and getting medication and whatnot, the link in the, or the coupon code in the description will give you $50 off your first treatment, off of TRT, off of HRT, or whatever it is that you end up getting prescribed for whatever your needs are essentially for hormone optimization, because it's a pretty comprehensive approach. It's not just testosterone and that's it. There's actually you know, a myriad of services there that I, I I would compel you to check out if you're interested in any capacity in hormone optimization um, and just health and longevity. In addition, check out my Gorilla Mind Nootropics and pre-workout formulas. I sit on a Word document, write these up from scratch and highly recommend you check those out for productivity as well as if you're just somebody who needs that uh, get me up to go to the gym and whatnot or you're an entrepreneur, you're a student or you're um, some pretty, you know, you're an editor, whatever. The new tropics are great for that. So I recommend checking those out as well as anything else I'm associated with. All of it is in the video description below. Thank you guys for watching. Talk to you soon.